Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, a very biased collection as usual. Um, today, something new. I would like to make two videos, or actually two videos on the same topic, and this is the first one. So it's not quite a trilogy, it's just two of them, but anyway. Um, so there's something really cool I would like to talk about, which is called a Tate coloring. And in the first video, I kind of only explain what a Tate coloring is and state the main result about Tate colorings, but it's well, it is nice at some combinatorics, but it looks a little bit like, why should we care? And in the next video, I'm going to explain um, a really nice talk or kind of summarize part of a really nice talk uh, by Kronheimer and Rothka from the ICM 2018, which was really, really fantastic. Uh, so link is in the description. And it's related to, well, the Tate coloring. And in the end, then, as we're going to see in this video, the four color theorem. So kind of we have a punchline in this video already, uh, animations and nice pictures, but uh, the main point, kind of the new mathematics, if you want, comes uh, next time. So this time it's Tate coloring, that's the 19th century. So it's not really new, new mathematics in some sense, but it's pretty cool. So uh, stay with me here. Okay, so let's get started. I would like to talk about something that I call a web. So what what is a web? So what is a web? Well, a spider web, think of spider webs. So a web is a certain type of graph where every vertex is trivalent. So every vertex uh, looks like this. Yeah, and I want it to be planar. So pictures that you see here, they're all webs, planar trivalent graphs. And I just call them webs. So here, everything is trivalent, as you can see. Everything is trivalent and because they tend to form kind of bigger hexagon type objects or something. And they look a little bit like webs. So these are kind of small examples. If you think of something really huge eh, with this trivalent property, it actually will look like a spider web. That's why they called webs. And planar just means I can draw them without crossings. Trivalent, every vertex has degree three, which makes them a web if you want. And planar, they can be drawn without crossings. And here are kind of uh, standard, very, very standard examples. There's a coloring here, and I will come back to the coloring in a second. But for now, there's just the webs that you see here. Yeah, web, again, I said again, like a spider web, one of these huge graphs um, with, which are kind of planar and trivalent at the same time. OK, so let's come to the coloring now. So I call this a web coloring, or a Tate coloring, actually. Um, so this is called a Tate coloring, just webs, webs, webs get color. So it's, a web column. And it works as follows. Around each vertex, remember that you have that we have uh, three edges. And I would like to use three colors. Let's say blue, uh, green, and whatever, orange, such that around each trivalent vertex, all colors are present. And just spread it over the whole graph. So here's, for example, an example where my colors are not the ones I've used before. What a pity. They are blue. Uh, red and purple, I guess. And as you can see around each vertex, here, for example, you have blue, red, and purple present, blue, red, and purple present, blue, red, and purple present, and so on. Here the colors are different. Here the colors are, well, everyone has their own color convention, I guess. Here the colors are uh, red, blue, and green, red, blue, and green, red, blue, and green. Here the colors are this kind of, well, so certainly red and blue, and then something I would call yellowish, I guess. Uh, maybe it wants to be green, or kind of, I'm not quite sure. But anyway, around each vertex, you have all three colors present, right? So that's the whole point here again, and so on and so on. And this one is just another copy of the other. And similarly for all of these. So this was a coloring here. And I called it a Tate coloring. So all three colors are present around uh, each vertex. So all adjacent vertex get a different color. And that's called a Tate coloring. Um, the question is, do Tate colorings exist? How can we count Tate colorings or all that type of questions? But let me explain where that actually comes from because it comes from the four color theorem. I show you the proof that essentially Tate colorings are equivalent to the four color theorem. Okay, so four color theorem is the following idea and it's a bit more well known than the Tate coloring, although, well, Tate tried to prove the four color theorem. That's how Tate came up with the Tate colorings. So it came a little bit later, but the four color theorem is kind of a uh, well, it took about 100 years to get proven, and all proofs are very, very complicated. It goes back to the 1850s, where kind of uh, a slightly boring task. This person here was kind of forced to 
well, forced, uh, needed to color uh, the counties of England, so like on, on this map here. And the following way, the two adjacent counties get different colors. So here, four colors. Uh, so red, uh, what is it? Yellow, green, and blue. And whenever you have something adjacent here, everything around gets a different color. Everything around this little uh, blue county here. And apparently, um, this person colored quite a few counties. It tried quite a few possibilities and came up with this conjecture that four colors are enough. So nobody told them to begin with, you should use four colors. It could have been any number of colors, but turns out that, well, must have been, must have tried something like one million different options. Anyway, comes up with this conjecture that every map is four colorable, not just the counties of England where you just see a solution right now, but any map, any map is four colorable. And yeah, so <laughs> this, well, one of the most important conjectures in all of mathematics in general and graph theory or whatever you want to call it and took a hundred years to prove and all proofs are really really complicated and people try to come up with um masks to simplify the proof new proofs and it's you shouldn't try it it's very hard well a lot of people tried and there are also a lot of very really wrong proofs so it's, it's easy to kind of um think you've done the correct thing but then you miss the case and that case is actually crucial and it just explodes something like that so uh, anyway, don't try it. Just uh, hope that someone gives a not so complicated proof eventually. And that's what this whole video series, or two videos, I shouldn't call it a series, two videos is all about. Namely, we are up for uh, an algebra, a better proof than this computer verified proof um, from the 70s, Apple and Hacker. And how do you do it? Well, you associate to your map coloring a graph by just giving uh, each well, what is it, county or each uh, country, whatever you want to call them, um, uh, and, uh, a vertex, and you connect things if they are connected, if they have a neighboring boundary. And then you just have the same type of coloring problem, um, but you just color vertices here. So here, every vertex, all of the neighbors should get a different color, as you can see here. Uh, here, all of the neighbors should get a different color and so on. And the conjecture is that four colors suffice. And this gives you a kind of, from the definition of coming from maps, this gives you a planar configuration. So every planar graph is four colorable, was the conjecture. And Tate tried to prove it um, and in the following way. So Tate came up with this four, four CT, four color theorem, came up with that actually the vertex coloring problem for the four color theorem is equivalent to an edge coloring problem of webs. So every planar web is three colorable and three colorable is exactly what I showed you, this web coloring with three colors. And this is a condition on being bridgeless, which I will usually ignore just the condition you need anyway. So a bridge in a graph is an edge. So here, the bridges are red. A bridge in a graph is an edge that if you remove it, um, you get a disconnected graph. So everything red is a bridge, everything black is not a bridge and you need no bridges uh, in order to make this work. So every planar bridgeless graph is three colorable is equivalent to the four color theorem. And then Tate, of course, tried to prove um, this Tate coloring conjecture, if you want. I will sketch the proof of, well, not why those are true, but why those are equivalent. And next time I will show you an algorithm um, that is supposed to count Tate colorings. And the point is, as soon as the algorithm spits out the number that is not zero, you have proven the four color theorem. That's kind of the whole point. And that's a little bit easier because it's kind of an algorithm uh, than kind of sitting down and coloring countries uh, by hand, which is kind of the whole advantage of this coloring. But I need the second video to do that. For now, we just focus on the proof and the proof is really, really cute. And I show you the animation uh, and Mathematica animation in a second, which is also, of course, linked in the description, so you can run it yourself. The idea is as follows. So first, what you can do is you can restrict, actually, the problem of co map colorings to web colorings, but now with faces of the web. I'm not also like, like the map problem. This works by triangulating the original graph and taking the dual. Doesn't matter. Um, let's just go for it. Let's just say, uh, the face coloring of a web with four colors is the equivalent to the edge coloring of the web with three colors. 
And that's what I'm trying to show you today. And it works as follows. So four colors, I would like to think of them as being the four elements of, well, the one of the most famous groups ever, the Klein four group, which is just Z2 cross Z2. So Z2 cross Z2 has four elements. Um, here they are, the identity, uh, 1.0, 0 0.1, and 1.1. And I would like to think of each color as one of those elements. So in my illustration here, yellow is identity, uh, blue is 1,0, red is 0, 0,1, and green is 1, 1,1. And whenever you have an adjacent pair, you of course get an edge between them. And what, what, what color gets those, the, the edge? Just at the two things. So here, 1,1, one, one, 0, 1 is 1, 0. So this edge gets blue. And indeed, on the other side, it does get blue. So let's try another one here. This edge here between uh, will get blue as well. So maybe I find a different one. So this edge here between E and green, green is 1, 1, E is E. So it gets 1, 1. And indeed, the edge gets the green color. So that's how you go from a full coloring to a three coloring of the edges. And now I show you the converse with uh, the mathematical illustration. So here's the illustration and you can select graphs, but we can just stay with this one. And here I have a three coloring. So the, the usual uh, trivalent colors on the edges. And I would like to go to a face coloring. And how do I do that? I do the following. It's a really beautiful trick. And this is really Tate's main trick. So I look at um, cycles that come up by ignoring one color. So if I ignore red, for example, I get a cycle that goes along uh, purple and by definition or by coloring, this works because at each vertex, we just have one choice by ignoring red, right? Purple, blue, purple, blue, purple, blue, purple, blue, and so on. And just goes you all the way around. So here, this is a, a thing cut out by the pass and everything in this in this region, you just give it the colors, purple, blue, purple, blue, purple, blue, right? So here, this little region that I cut out from purple, blue, purple, blue, purple, blue, gives me the corresponding coloring on the faces, purple, blue, purple, blue, and so on. I can do the same with this one here, which ignores blue. So this is purple, red, purple, red, purple, red, yep, purple, red, purple, red, purple, red, and it will cut out the purple, red part. And you just do that for all uh, three possibilities and you had a legit coloring, full coloring of the web. And that's pretty cool. So you look at those two color chains and they conversely give you a full coloring of uh, the web. Okay, so today was kind of Tate's idea um, and, and a problem that is equivalent to the full coloring problem and you might want to try to solve this one. And it's not quite clear from this video what the advantage of the strategy is, but this algorithm to count Tate colorings is just fantastic. Uh, it's not like it's easy, still easy to solve, but it's, it's pretty fantastic. And this is what the second video will be all about. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.